everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. Welcome to Coloring Bliss and today we're going to answer the question should you save your money or should you invest in the brand new alcohol-based markers that Tombow is making? This is them right here. They are called the ABT Pro alcohol-based Tombow markers. They look very similar to their water-based markers that we know and love. So what I would like to do with you is compare them, their brush tip especially to the original water-based markers and we're going to compare them to some of our favorite alcohol-based markers like the Copics, the Blix, and a whole bunch of others that I have here. I'm really excited because I haven't tested them at all. I've just held them in my hands and we have the Tombow website that we're going to look at because it has a lot of great information for us as well. So let's get started and start by looking at them compared to, I don't know, would you call them their big brothers, the water-based markers that Tombow has had for a long time, and just see how they are the same and how they are a little different. So let's look at them first off right here. Okay, so this, the black-bodied markers are the original Tombows, the water-based ones. So that's this one right here, and they are the same length. So if you are familiar with the water-based ones, the Tombow markers are actually really long. Let me show you compared to here's a Copic marker so Tombow markers are really long so that's the first thing to know but I kind of like them they are you know pencil shaped they feel good in the hand they don't feel off balanced at all so I've always been a fan of the Tombow markers so the water-based markers what we love about them especially is that beautiful brush tip on the end it's so great for coloring and really good for laying down letters, doing different kinds of hand le lettering. They're just really great for that. Now, also on the other end, it has a bullet tip right here. So that's how these markers have always been laid out. The caps stack on the end, which is really nice just like that. They come in in a lot of beautiful colors. I think it's around 107 colors the water-based markers do. So they stack like that and they are fantastic. They are available open stock, they're not refillable, um, and they're very popular. They've been around for a long time. But these are the new ones. That's what we're here to talk about right here. This line of markers, alcohol-based. I love alcohol-based markers. They lay down a beautiful line of ink, vibrant colors. They don't pill and streak as much as a water-based ink does. They do, um, they tend to bleed more, so you have to be aware of that. And they're not as light fast, typically, so you need to be aware of that as well. But let's take a look at this marker right here. So on this end, we have a beautiful brush tip. Let's compare it to the original Tombow right here. So the light end, this one here, the black body is the water-based, and the gray body is the alcohol-based. So you can see the tip is identical in shape. So I'm excited to actually put it to paper and see what it does. But you can see that they're identical in shape. Now one thing I discovered right away as I've been kind of playing with the caps is the alcohol base marker caps, they don't stack which is, you know, kind of a pet peeve of mine, so that's a little discouraging. On the other end, instead of a bullet nib, they've given us a chisel nib, and it's a unique chisel nib. I'm excited to play with it. It kind of reminds me of more of a, of a highlighter type nib, so we'll see how it feels and how it plays. Um, I'll show you compared to the chisel tip on a Copic. So you can see that they're shaped different. There you go. So this one right here is the Copic, and that's the new Tombow marker. You can see that it's just totally shaped different. We'll look at it a little bit closer here in a minute. Okay, so, and again, the problem is that that cap also doesn't stack on the other end. Kind of weird that they don't stack. 
Then on the body, you can see they have an indicator right here that shows you this is the brush end, this is the chisel end. Of course, the big cap, that's the brush end. That's another way to tell. They've got the color name right here um, indicated by number, but there's no name as far as the, the they, they give them names on their website. So if you wanna know the name, not just the number, you have to go to the website to find that. So that's what the new marker looks like. Okay, so some details that you might want to know about these new markers. Of course, they're alcohol-based, which is why we're here, what we're excited about. They come in 107 different colors, and there is a colorless blender. So the exciting thing that I was really interested about was um, there were rumors that the colors would um, match identically to the original Tombows, the water-based ones. And according to the website, some of the colors do match, but the they're not going to be an identical color match. Basically, it's like two different recipes and they tried to get as close as they could with some of the colors, but not all of the colors are going to match. And then the, this set has some um, unique colors. So some will be close and then there are some that are just on their own original colors for the alcohol base marker set. Now they're, they're available open stock they're non-refillable, they have the brush and chisel nib like we just saw, and then they come in sets of 12, five, and then of course one at a time. And roughly they're coming in at about $6 per marker. So they are very pricey. So that's kind of the question we're here to answer is, are they worth that cost? So far, the only place I'm finding them available is on Tombow's website. I haven't been able to find them on Amazon, and it's a little confusing on Amazon. When you search for them, make sure you're looking for the alcohol-based markers. I put in the ABT Pro name on Amazon, and some of the markers are coming up on Amazon are saying that this is the Amazon, or, or the, Tombow ABT Pro, but then you look in the fine print and it's saying water-based, not alcohol-based. So be really careful that if you're going to order these, you're getting the alcohol-based markers. And also remember on Tombow's website, they are selling them um, on sale from time to time. So if you wanna wait for a sale, I highly recommend you get on their email list and wait for a sale to come up. Okay, now we're really grateful to Tombow that they sent these markers to us so that I would have a chance to review these. Um, I was really excited that they gave me this opportunity, so thank you, Tombow. When I talk to them, they are very aware that I'm going to give my honest opinion to you like I always do, whether I purchase the products or whether they're given to me as a gift, you can guarantee from me that I will always give you my honest opinion. So let's actually put pen to paper and see how they feel. I'm so excited. Okay, let's do green since I have a whole bunch of green ones out here. Let's try this green one right here. Let's see how it feels. So this is P133. Oh, see, I went straight to Steve sitting here to help me with the camera. <laughs> I went straight to cap and it wouldn't cap on the end. I wonder with that lighter color if you'll be able to see the chisel. Oh, yeah, maybe I can show the chisel tip off. Yeah, that's a little better. It's kind of angled interestingly. Hmm, maybe we should try the other camera view. I'll see if I can show them on here. Oh, oh, right there. Can you see how it's angled interestingly? It's pretty interesting. Let's see how many different strokes we can get out of the chisel tip first off. Okay, so with the chisel nib, we can get a nice broad stroke. We can get a really thin stroke. Ooh, we got some thunder where I'm at right now. Okay, so you can get a really thin line. This is why I prefer a chisel nib over a bullet nib, because you can still get those tiny little lines that you would get with a bullet nib, but with chisel nibs, you get all these other options. I love a chisel nib. In fact, if I were to design a marker, this is the type of marker I would design. One that is feels like a pencil or a pen in your hand but then it has a chisel nib on one end, just like this one right here, has that nice chisel nib, and then on the other end, a beautiful brush nib. 
this is exactly the way I would design it. Now, I would put the name, not just the number, I would put the name of the color as well, because I love having the color name. And I would make it so the caps would stack. That So far, those are my two criticisms. Okay, let's feel how this brush nib feels. I'm so excited. Okay, so we've got the tiny lines you can get, and then, oh, it feels so good. It feels just like the water-based ones. That is so good. Okay, I wanna test though and make sure that it feels the same. Now I am on really good marker paper. This is really smooth, really dense paper. I love this paper. I'll put a link to my paper that I love um, in the video description if you're interested in this paper. Yeah, okay, get the feel of the old nib. And now let's feel the new nib. If anything, I think it's smoother. Could be because it's alcohol. Yeah, it could be. Because it um, alcohol, the ink itself dries faster, so it would have a different feel as it goes across the paper. It feels really good. Oh, I'm excited. Now, I am seeing... When you, when you put a marker to paper, you get a pooling of the ink where it first touches and then you get um, kind of a feathering effect, which is what, what you want because you can work with that effect. Um, but are we getting different colors? Let me show you. Uh, right there. Can you see how it's almost a two-tone effect, which we don't want? We want consistent color. Um, so let's try a different marker and see if we're getting a two-tone effect. Let's try this red. This one is P847. Let's see. Get it up in the screen. Oh, it feels really good. I want that feather stroke. That's what I'm looking for because you can get good blending and shading if you can get that feather stroke. And I love how wide the, you can get a really wide stroke. Oh, look at that flick. That is a good flick. But are we getting that two-tone? No. The other thing to remember when you're working with um, any kind of wet media, whether it's water-based or alcohol-based, it's as it dries, it will change. So you want to give it a second to dry. Maybe grab a similar Copic. Maybe that green. Yeah, let's see what Copics do. Okay. Uh, we have a green Copic. I have a few Copics here with me. I'm not in my art studio today. I'm in our, our new portable art studio, our mobile art studio. So I only have a few Copics with me today. So we're kind of limited. This color that here. lighter green would be. I'm oh, just curious to see here. if you get that two tone effect with. Okay, that is a good. That's probably the closest color match we're going to get here away from my art studio at home. I'm going to do a smell test here in a minute, too, or at least make Steve do the smell test. Okay, so here you can see. It hasn't had as much time to dry as these ones here. This is the Tombow. This is the Copic. Okay. Interesting. As this one's drying, we're not getting that two-tone. So maybe it was just as it was wet. I want to try more and see if we have the same look. And I do want to show you the brush nibs in comparison, the two. So you can see the Copic brush nib versus the Tombow here. They look very similar. The, the Copic one has more, it goes straight for a bit and then it tapers off, where the Tombow is much more cone-shaped or triangular shape. I don't know. I was never very good at geometry. <laughs> okay, let's keep um, interesting. That's that same one. It really does, I think it's putting a lot of ink down with the first stroke, which is something you'd want to be aware of if, when you're coloring with them. It's um, a property of these markers, I guess. Let's try a few other colors and see what they do. Oh, pretty. 
They're not the juiciest markers I've ever worked with. Probably the juiciest ones I've ever worked with, in case you're wondering, are the Prismacolor brush tips. Whoa, that one's neat. Look at that one. Those two colors together are pretty. Let's try this vibrant blue. Steve loves blue. And then I'm gonna make him smell it. <laughs> oh, that one had a little bit of leakage into the cap. Yeah. If you ever have this happen, you can use a little rubbing alcohol to clean the marker so that it won't get everywhere. I have a whole bunch of markers that need cleaning. I brought my cleaning supplies with me in our mobile art studio so I can sit down and clean a whole bunch of my markers. That one's working really well. All right, Steve, why don't you smell this one, the P879 and a Copic. This one is Copic E09 and we'll compare it with an Ohuhu. This is their Ohuhu brush tip and I'll have you compare it with a Blick. These okay. are my current favorites. Let me smell favorites. all green. Oh, all green. Yes. Yes. Okay. You know we found sometimes the sometimes different colors smell different, different. colors, yeah, okay, that's fair. I think that's fair. Okay, there are four green alcohol-based markers for Steve to smell. Okay, he will smell and report back to us. Okay, so I want to keep... What do keep... you think on the... Um, I'm just curious, the feel of the nib, of that brush nib, Copic versus... Okay, Tombow. let's do Copic versus Tombow. Okay, let's do... Uh, we've got um, a blue. Let's do blue. Okay, blue... Oh, that feels so good. Copics are kind of like industry standard for one of the best markers, alcohol-based markers for illustrators and um, designers. They love Copic markers. Um, so usually when we compare markers, we go straight to Copic as one of the things to compare to. Okay. Well, it's definitely different. It's made of something different. It has a different slide to it. I would say it doesn't feel as juicy. We're getting a good flick. Um, with a brush tip, that's what I always look for is that flick. Um, I think the Copic is more flexible. Uh, I wonder if you can hear the sound it makes. Let's see if you can hear the difference in the sound. I don't know if this microphone can pick it up. I will try. Let's see if you can hear. Okay, I don't know if you heard that. Now listen to three strokes of the Tombow and the thunder. <laughs> so there's a definite sound difference. Can you hear it here, like, uh, uh, Steve can hear it. Tombows this are quieter. It has more of a fiber feel. Huh. Um, so whatever the difference is. In fact, let's go to the website and read a little bit about it. But before we do that, Steve, okay. what was your smell okay. decision? From this is the order in how strong it smells. The alcohol smell. Alcohol markers just have more of a. Yeah. Uh, they smell like alcohol. The strongest alcohol. of the four was Blick. Blick was the strongest. Okay. Then Tombow. Then Tombow. Then Ohuhu. Then Ohuhu. Then Copic. Okay. So that was Steve's smell rating for so us. So Copic smells the least offensive okay or strong and and blick is strongest of those yeah and if you're new to coloring bliss we always do this because um we have a lot of people in our community that are very scent sensitive and so we like to give you a little gauge of what the smell is on more stinky products like alcohol based markers so on the stinkometer um the tombos are not the stinkiest but they aren't the most Mellow. Mellow <laughs> of our markers. Okay, so um, yeah, let's 
let's look at Tombow's website real quick so we can see pricing and their information. So I've got my iPad here. Steve's going to adjust the lighting so you can see it a little clearer. So I'm going to put the link um, to this page. This is like their information um, page of where you can see all the the information about their new alcohol based markers so they they're telling you about their flexible brush tip their chisel tip that it's fast drying you know how many colors they are it's great for layering and all that but where it got interesting to me they talk about their airtight caps um, the Japanese nibs vibrant colors lots of good information here that you can go in where I think you're going to find some real benefit here is they talk about some really good coloring techniques and tricks here that will apply to any kind of alcohol based markers. If you've invested in a more cost effective type marker like Ohuhu's or um, the Cali Arts, um, you could come here and learn some pretty good information. So thank you Tombo for helping all of us learn about coloring a little bit better, um, how to do good brush. Um, pressures, how to deal with streaking, circular strokes, how to do layering and feathering. Here's those flicks I was talking about. And here's some coloring tips, blending tips, um, and then just some imagery to get you inspired. And then here they're showing you how you can purchase them in five packs, in 12 packs, um, and then just some comments on what people are saying about them. And then down here, they get into the frequently asked questions. So specific information if you have questions about um, the Tombow, the new line of Tombows. And this is where I learned about, like, should you store the um, markers horizontally or vertically? And typically, all double-ended markers should be stored horizontally. So there's a lot of information here. So follow that link, and you can come and learn about this. And then let's go back here where you can see the pricing. So here, for instance, is one of their 12 packs, and it's going for $70. So like I said, it's roughly about $6 per marker. So their 12 packs are $70. The five packs are $30. And then if you come over here to where you can see their individual markers are $6. And again, there's 108 to pick from. So if you're like me and you suffer from full set syndrome and you decide you need them all, you've got a lot to collect here. So that's kind of exciting. So yeah, that's all their information right there on their website. So really good website, well done. I've run into some websites where they just don't give you hardly any information. So I really appreciate that. Um, Tombow took the time to come out with some really good information on their website. Okay, so let's get back to doing some more basic blending and see if I can get a blend out of these markers. That's the next question I want to get into is, can I get a good blend? So let's pick three markers to try. Um, these are the ones that Tombow sent to me. So let's see what we can find here that would make a good blend together. So I want to get my other markers out of the way and see what groups we have to put together. We could probably put those three together. Um, that might make a good light, medium, and dark right there. Let's try those three. Okay. Let's, I'm just going to try. I'll write down the names of what I have here in case you want to try P847. Okay, and then this one is P772. And this really light one is P910. Uh, can you even see that? Okay. That's going to be two. Is that one too light? Nine one zero. Okay. All right. So let's try bringing these three together and see what happens. Okay. So we're going to start with the lightest color. They do feel a little bit on the dry side. More thunder to 
to make the drama of bringing these colors together. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, go this way now. Well, those two colors look really pretty together. This is where that flick stroke um, is so handy because you've got that, um, those, that, uh, what am I trying to say? When you do your flick stroke, the first place you touch down, you've got lots of ink, and then that feathering out gives you less ink over here. So when you bring them together, that middle part just automatically starts to come together really easily. That's why we love a brush tip so much, because that middle part just starts to blend really easy. Okay, now let's bring in the darker one and see what we can do here. Wow, that's quite a jump. Let's see if we can make it come together. Okay. On their website, they also have a lot of tips on how to use their colorless blender. And it's colorless blenders typically are not really for blending. So you'll want to go read what they suggest. Okay, now let's see what we can do to bring these together. So I like to work on a really soft um, textured paper for markers like this because it protects the nibs and makes that feathering stroke really easy to do. And then I like a paper that has good dense fibers. So a thick paper is really nice. All right, let's see. This one has more of a peachy orange undertone and then these are much more red. So we'll see if we can bring them together here. Well, it's kind of coming together. We need another crash of thunder for this blend. <laughs> Come on, thunder. I want to bring just a little bit more of that red up here. Okay. And then I'm going to bring this color, the mid-tone, back in. Okay, then remember what I said earlier about this being a wet art media. You need to let it sit and let these markers rest for a minute and then you come back and you can touch it up. But that came together pretty good, especially where we were using um, an, a light tone that was a little bit different. It was more on the orange side, but I think that came together pretty good. What do you think, Steve? Should yeah, we try two blues? One. Let's try two blues. We're gonna start with the light blue. Go this way. Let's kind of create a line there. Lay down some pretty blue. See how you can pretty much get rid of that, the streakiness with alcohol based markers. I love that. And then this way. Okay, that's coming together. Let's let that sit now. Here comes our thunder again, P526. Okay, so I think we're coming to the part where I need to say whether I think this is worth the money or not. P, um, this one was P535. We've got some rain to help with the drama of this moment. <laughs> we'll see how loud it's going to get. Okay, as the rain gets more intense on the roof of our RV, <laughs> uh, we've come to the part where I wanna tell you if I think that these markers are worth the cost. So they're coming in at about $6 per marker, and I just double-checked on their website, and the water-based, <laughs> the thunder. <laughs> the water-based ones are only $3.19 per marker, and that's full price on Tombow's website, and you can usually get the water-based ones for a lot less if you buy them in their packs or with a coupon at, like, Michael's or on Amazon. So are these worth $6 a marker? 
things I like about them. I love the shape, the size. I love the brush nib with a chisel nib on it. I think those are winners. I love the number of colors that are available. I don't love the price. I think they are too high in cost for um, an alcohol-based marker, especially one that doesn't have refills available. Um, for this cost, we're playing in the same cost bracket as Copics and Prismacolors, and all of those are in a system where you can get refills, you can get um, replaceable nibs. So for this cost, I would expect Tombow to come up to the to the same level of supplies as those types of companies where they have refills and nibs that you can replace these markers with. So I'm hoping, if Tombow, if you're watching, I'm hoping that you will come out with that kind of a system to support these markers at that price point. Now maybe they're going to drop their price eventually and bring it down to the same type of price point as their water-based markers and then maybe it, I will feel a little bit differently about these markers because at this price point I think I would steer you towards a Prismacolor marker or a Copic marker because then you're supported with a system where you can refill your markers, replace the nibs if necessary, um, all of that good stuff that comes with a system of markers like this. These are awesome though. I'm excited about them and they do trigger my full set syndrome. I'm excited that I have this many. I'm going to play with them some more and let you know how the nibs stand up uh, over time because that is another question that this test that I've done so far doesn't answer. So I'm going to play with them more, let you know how they do over time let you know if my opinion changes. But for now, my opinion is wait for a good sale and you can purchase some and see how you feel about them. Comment below, do you own them? Do you have them and you've been playing with them? How do you feel about them? How long is the ink lasting for you? Do you wish they had refills? I want to know your feeling about these new markers. So thanks again, Tombo, for sending these to me. I'm gonna keep playing with them and keep comparing them. I wanna see if I have some of the colors that match up with some of these that they sent me and um, do some color comparisons and keep working with them. So make sure that you have hit like on this video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe because you'll see these coming up in future videos and I will continue to let you know how I feel about them. So this is a lot of fun. I hope you have fun coloring and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye everyone.